Hello, hello. Welcome to episode five of the Clutch Cast. We are really excited to talk about photography today. Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be the topic of today's podcast, and let's just jump in. I'm Evan. I'm videographer at Clutch. I'll, although I'll, sometimes I do photography when it needs it, but let's introduce the rest of the team here. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm AK. I am the production manager here at Clutch, but I am a lover of all things clicky. And photography has always been part of Mia Vida. Chris. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm Chris. I'm a photographer here at Clutch. So I actually get paid to do it. And um, I really love my job. And uh, I just, I've always had a camera on me. And I'm excited to be here. I'm Jay Z. I'm the director of productions here at Clutch. Um, even though I've shifted more t towards video, uh, photography was what started my career, and uh, this is how I got into the space. Very cool, very cool. You are, uh, what is it, employee 001? 001. 001. Yeah, at least I'm still waiting for the shirt, you know, the 001, oh, but yeah. <laughs> the jersey. Yeah, I mean, most people know Clutch for doing video, but photography is a lot of what we do. Um, yeah, it actually started as... David said of photography, doing weddings with employee 001 over here. Yeah, um, before I met David, David was already doing like a little side hustle besides being a reporter on TV. Um, and he was, we were doing mainly wedding photography. Um, so that was quite fun, a lot of long days. We probably shot hundreds of weddings. Uh, and I'm glad we've gone, you know, more of the corporate route, but... Yeah, yeah I've heard <laughs> horror stories. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting married soon. I'm trying not to be a bridezilla. <laughs> yeah, well, if you need anybody, we could uh, not... Don't count All on me. Yeah, you don't, count, don't count on us. <laughs> <laughs> we do corporate uh, stuff now, AK. <laughs> no, weddings Weddings was actually very uh, uh, satisfying to, to, to capture because you see the moments and it's a lot of pressure. You have to be on, on point. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, I bet. Well, I know David got started on his weekends away from the news desk, but how did our photo journeys begin? Let's, <laughs> let's dive into that. So, Chris, let's dive up? into, <laughs> you know, like, where did, where, did the, where did all this begin? Tell us early Chris photo days. So, I kind of grew up with uh, always smiling at pictures. My mom would always ask me to say cheese, and I kind of perfected my smile when I was very young. And uh, yeah, just growing up, always being taken pictures of and just always, there's always a camera and it kind of started with my grandma. She would always take pictures and then eventually went down to my mm -hmm. mom and then eventually went down to me, you know, and then my mom kind of one day thought, maybe I really want to take pictures for a living and let me get myself a DSLR. She grabbed it, touched it for a week, thought it was a bit too complicated and uh, never picked it up again. But there I was. I picked it up and I actually fell in love with it. And I think I fell in love with the process of ca kind of just capturing the moments that were in front of me. Um, I'm kind of the friend in the friend group that has the camera. And uh, <laughs> I always like taking those candid moments because no one else is. And I want to be able to look back at it when I'm 90 years old on my deathbed and kind of see my whole story in front of me, you know? So that's why I like taking pictures. That's really cool. That's what about you, Karina? No, no, it's, I mean, and I just want to say, like, congrats on all of you guys for actually getting paid for doing this, yeah. you know, because, like, for me, I started, you know, I've always been doing photography, I feel, you know, um, I think my, my thing started with my family, same thing, my parents always taking photos and sort of documenting our lives, and I say that, you know, for a kid that grew up in, in Peru in the 70s and 80s, we have a lot of photography, like, pictures and albums of, of our lives to, um, as growing up. So that was pretty cool. And then I've always was that person too, carrying a camera everywhere I went. In junior high, my parents had like this little cannon that had a remote control. And in this picture, I'm holding the remote control in my hand. And it was like, it's a film camera. And I, and I don't even know if I put it on a tripod or what. I think it was just like on one of those desks. But I, I was always that person that had the camera. And like everywhere I went, the camera was with me. And I think this was like, this Pentax K1000 is the first camera that I was using to shoot all my my photos with back in back in my day. Back when cameras <laughs> were made out of metal. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> heavy as hell. I couldn't 
travel What's with that? this like today. a 1954 model or <laughs> <laughs> whoa, yeah, whoa, this whoa. Is, uh, yeah what is it the, the hey look at this sure. assembled in china <laughs> what do you know <laughs> But yeah, that's kind of like how uh, my journey got started. And I've been, you know, just always carrying a camera with me ever since. What about you, JZ? Um, my story, I feel like it's very common. Uh, my dad was always that guy on the vacation, like, hey, look over here. Like, is this a video camera or, um, or a stills? Was and, like uh, big? Yeah, he was like, everybody's like, knew him as the photographer of the group. So. Oh, right, right. So then um, he had a Canon A1. Mm -hmm. A P that he bought from a friend along with a dark room that he kind of like set up for a little bit in the garage so I was influenced by that but I didn't pick up a camera until my later years uh, my senior year in, in high school picked up a Nikon digital camera and then that's when I started getting introduced to the world and I fell in love with it just the challenge uh, of just seeing the light how it would react with the sensor and just trying to get creative you know with the composition and, and photos so. super cool Super cool. Well, I mean, I feel like a lot of photographers have similar stories. You know, like at one point we were young, we encountered it, it kind of had an effect on us. And that's kind of where I started too. Um, I was always into science and art as a kid. And I feel like photography was one of those things where you could kind of combine both. And my high school had darkroom classes and same with my college, but I wasn't able to take those. So actually I've never taken a class in photography. So. I kind of just use that inspiration to to learn how to do stuff in the dark room and I have my own dark room now at my nice. apartment and I just think I don't know there's something magical in like developing your own film and then producing an enlarger print from it like a silver gelatin print and just seeing the image come to life and especially in such a digital age I think there's like something unique yeah. and special that about that. That dodging and the burning yeah. where you do, like and that smell of the yeah. chemicals. And I love that. Yeah. I love that it's so, so much. It's so fun. And it's something you can do for hours in the dark room. Yeah. It's like, that thrill, yeah. I think, when, yeah. when you're just shaking, agitating the yeah. the paper and all of a sudden, like little by little, the, you know, it's kind of, I guess anybody who, has, who hasn't done a dark room is like that Polaroid. Yeah. When yeah, it starts appearing, it. it's that same effect, but like yeah. all that effort into yeah. that single yeah. image. Yeah. And like, you can learn the science, but there's just like, it feels magical. I don't know. And that's something that I grew up in a digital age. And I think having that little like touch into the analog process kind of like was what started my passion for photography. I think. Well, you do, do you develop color at home? I've developed color before. Wow. It's, it's trickier than black and white because yeah. it has to be hotter. Yeah. So you need like a, a warm water bath and okay. I have... It's funny because I bought this sous vide machine to make like the, food. The, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the first few years, I only used it to develop color film. Oh, okay. So now I'm using it for cooking, but yeah. it's cool. What it was cool. actually the, your for. priorities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you have your priorities Innovation straight. Innovation. Yeah. Well, well, I think I think we touched a little bit about like what inspires us and kind of like the beginnings of us of our j photo journey. So I want to hear what what makes all of you guys excited about photography. Chris, why don't you go first? Uh, so what I kind of tapped into uh, a couple of years ago was street photography. I love the whole aspect of it. Uh, kind of just like forced myself to like really just explore my environment and uh, really capture what I see in front of me. Um, I found myself struggling in the beginning because it's a lot that really goes into street photography. You know, a lot of movement. You got to really know your camera like it's the back of your hand, basically. Yeah. And um, also kind of experiencing other people around me, like being able to just like go up to them. And like that was one of the hardest things for me to go up to people and just ask them to take a photo. But I noticed that it was very rewarding after you got the photo. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. it also built my confidence, too. I feel like I can talk to anybody now. And um, I think that's like kind of my favorite part of the whole street photography thing, just kind of like ass uh, assimilating myself into the world around me, you know, yeah. and uh, just capturing like those what may look mundane and normal to other people, you can kind of just make look aesthetic, you know? So Definitely. that's kind of like my favorite part of the whole thing. About and, and photographers like Joe Greer, uh, he's like one of my favorites on, on Instagram. He uh, shoots a lot of film and um, he just makes any boring wall or house or like, I don't know, any garden, it, it make, he makes it look beautiful. And that's what I kind of aspire uh, to be and, and to take photos of. Film, film street photography is tough, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Because you don't know what you're going to get until after. Yeah. You know? Which mm -hmm. is also, I think, the best part of it, you know? Yeah. And uh, with this digital world, you can kind of just snap away and 
I don't know, you can, you can take however p pictures you, you need to get the photo, but with mm -hmm. film, it's more you gotta like really take your time and, and have patience with it. And I think that brings a lot of value into those photos because you don't know what you're gonna get, so you better make sure you get it, you know, in, in that one photo. So I think Definitely. that's like the best part about film for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, there's something special about like being intentional and like yeah. reserving your photos for yes. the moments that really matter. Yes. Right? The moments that stand out to you. I think that's kind of what film forces us to, to put into our headspace. Yeah. And it yeah, slows yeah, you yeah. down too. Yeah, it slows yeah. you down. Um, for me, I mean, one big inspiration personally is photo books and I feel like just seeing how photographers that I'm really passionate and like look up to, how they curated a sequence of photos and how they decided to tell a story like in one linear kind of narrative in a photo book and you know like now with social media and stuff we can see any photographer's work basically like with the device that's always in our pocket yeah mm -hmm. but there's something special about like the medium of the medium of a photo book and i For almost sure. view it as a sculpture in a way yeah you know like every aspect of it was thought out and it was designed to be an object that you sit with and you kind of like observe and you just take everything in and i think yeah just seeing photo displayed in that kind of format is what inspired me to to do photography and i've even dabbled a little bit in in making books and kind of like sequencing images in that kind of format and it's really fun yeah it's nice because you're, you're getting out of the, the the tiny screen exactly and you're seeing it like even bigger and then bigger in a, in a museum yeah. if you ever well, yeah with the that. digital there's nothing tangible now it's yeah. like back right. then everything you could touch you could feel it like yeah you know so it's you nice get to up have to some it, prints you know? like a book yeah i mean one of my personal favorite photographers is stephen shore um and what's really cool about his work is I love that he was a part of Andy Warhol's studio that was in New York mm -hmm. and they were kind of revolutionizing modern art. Mm -hmm. And at the time, color photography was really Look only used for yeah. advertising and commercial work. Yeah. And he was like one of the first photographers that really decided to transition into color in a more artistic endeavor. And he went across America taking hundreds of photos of all these different cities and he took photos on a four by five, like large format camera, which the negative is like as big as your face, you know? <laughs> so the amount of resolution on those photos is unmatched Insane. to any digital camera. Yeah. Like it must be like 600 megapixels, you know? <laughs> So no, like, and, and I think about him like driving and like, you know, we're like just, oh, this is cool. You pull out your camera, you just like your phone and yeah, you just snap the photo and keep going. Like yeah. a, the setup for him. Was yeah. Like, it, it, like he had a whole system yeah. and like he has to set it up and he would probably spend hours waiting for that one perfect moment to yeah. capture, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just the aspect of shooting on four by five, like large format film was a really interesting aspect for me. And I... I have a four by five large format camera and I've shot Sweet. some work, but he's cool. I like him a lot. Um, Is that Clyde, the camera you put the yeah. blanket over? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> crazy because, so when you look at the, the ground glass, that's what it's called, mm -hmm. the image is upside down. So you're not looking at it how it's going to be perceived. Yeah. You almost have to like... Everything's inverted. Yeah, inverted you have to brain. imagine. Right, yeah, yeah, because then you're like, oh, you know, now I'm shifting the, the other way. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Another um, large format photographer that I really like is Clyde Butcher, who is actually local to Miami. Mm. He, he's the photographer that would take the That's black and white. That's the went to the, yeah. to the Everglades, right? Yeah, he's, he has a gallery in the Everglades. So he's kind of known for taking those like large scale black and white photos of the Everglades. Beautiful. And going to what you were saying, like going into a gallery and seeing a photo enlarged, like the size of a wall and just kind of like, especially shooting on a film that has that much resolution it's just you can like fall into the world that they mm. took a photo of oh i like that yeah he has a I gallery the in the everglades if everyone wants to check it out i, f I forget the name of it it's Cyp the cypress. cypress yeah cypress yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i was gonna say cypress hill, cypress hill. Cypress hill. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's the Big Cypress Big gallery. Cypress, yeah. yeah. Big, Cypress. Yeah. Big Cypress Hill. I actually did a, a field trip uh, uh, when I was at the university. It was an ecology tour through the Big Cypress, and I took my film camera, and like, you, you're you like this this high in water going through like the, I you know, alligators. And yeah, no, so no. I'm with my film camera <laughs> taking photos. It's super cool. Yeah. yeah. 
He uh, does. I think he does do those swamp walks. Is what he calls them. Yeah, Oof. they're, they're fun. I they're do. little. How could you walk through it? You don't know what you in feel something there, in your leg. Oh my oh, god! No, <laughs> but no. I think that's what's part of photography. Yeah, yeah. It's an adventure. Yeah. Like just yeah. like it's the okay. unknown. It's an it's adventure in the streets. It's fun yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the streets where I can see my feet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and where I'm stepping. You know. Yeah. Some oh. some some uh, students actually took a digital camera on that trip, and they were the whole trip like this. Right. Right. I was like, oh, look at my film camera. Well, Jay-Z, why don't you talk about some of your inspiration? Um, yeah, so some of my inspiration, uh, one of the main photographers that, I, and I feel like everybody who goes through like a film school or a photography yeah. school is uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson. Henri. Henri, Henri. <laughs> Henri. <laughs> Henri. <laughs> um, this image that, that's on the screen right now, it's what coined the term uh, the decisive moment. And it's just a, it's an, an idea of uh, just waiting for the moment to happen, just capturing it when you're ready so for example, right now, a lot of digital photographers, they have burst mode on mm. their cameras. So you might take 30, 40, I don't know, the, the new Sony, there's like 60 photos a second or some crazy number. But it's, I think it's slowing it down, maybe just putting it in single frame and picking when you wanna capture that when you're ready. Yeah. And when you think the tension's there or to tell the story, because photography is all about telling a story, a mm -hmm. visual story. Mm -hmm. So in this image, you just see the tension, like it's so many questions, you know, and then he decided to press the button right there. Not be after he jumped, uh, not before, it was just that decisive moment, yeah. you know. So I think it's very special. It's uh, just slowing things down. It's very, uh, I think it's been a theme of, of us right now. It's just slowing down and just imagine your camera only has 36 frames or, mm -hmm. or 12 frames, you know, it's just, Taking your time with things. You think if we uh, if we told Henry now, or we went back then, okay. time traveled, okay. hey, you could shoot sixty photos in a second. Oh my god! <laughs> you think he'd be like, yo, really? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, where's, where's that at? Where's that kid? Where's like, that kid? Have him jump! Have him yeah. jump again! <laughs> <laughs> it's like decisive moment. Yeah, back at my day. <laughs> 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 oh no! Oh no! <laughs> 120. Uh, Not to put down what you just said. <laughs> <Le telephone. laughs> yeah. No, but I think what he's also saying is It puts is more something. value into the Yeah, and it, it kind of makes you more intentional with what yes, you're capturing. Yeah, like, yeah. It's easy to go out and take 1,200 photos on any shoot. That's yeah. like a normal amount of photos that you come back with. But like, imagine just having two rolls of film and you had, what, like 60 something exposures yeah. Yeah. for your whole day. Like, mm -hmm. you better know which moments you yeah. want to yeah. like hold on to. For I've so. been out there and I'm sure like every film photographer's out there that it's like, you're about to press right. the button, and then you're like, mm, I'm, I'm good, yeah. I'm good, I'm good. No, like, I don't want to waste about 40 <laughs> cents on that photo. Yeah. It's not 40 it's cents like, anymore, it's man. Yeah. It's like, bro, it's like a dollar a photo. It's like a dollar, dollar a photo. photo. Yeah. 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 And if you have ever you ever shoot 120, you you have even less exposure. Like 10. Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. Uh, so yeah, it's. Uh, I think he's one of the main uh, main guys, and then I also had. Um, Jacques Henri Lartigue, another friend, I can't even pronounce his <laughs> name. Uh, oh, this look at was, that one. This oh, was, uh, yeah. he was getting into photography when it came more accessible to the public. And this is him as a child taking these photos. Oh, wow. So you see, yeah. this is, imagine, you know, a nine, 10 year old kid yeah. just taking these photos. Yeah. It's just like that, uh, that childlike view, you know, it's just seeing the, the, the way he saw the world through his eyes. Yeah. And he was just having fun with it. You know, he wasn't uh, trying to be some uh, technical or he's just, hey, that looks cool. Let me take this photo. Yeah. Look at and that. yeah, some of these images is just like. this lady. Yeah, I love the hat. So interesting. Like, like you know, cu curious things that a child, you know, sees and yeah, it's yeah, like, hey, yeah. that's cool. And to us, maybe as an adult, you're just like, ah, oh, you don't you don't even think twice about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you go back into that time, like the 1800s before photography even existed, like imagine how valuable it was to take a photo of something and have it be exactly what it was in that moment yeah. and yeah. be able to have that moment remembered forever. Like that invention in the time that it was created must have been such a trippy. Those, those portraits that were taken in those, pla those plates of like mercury plates or some shit and like people yeah. have to sit there like, for like 20 hours. Like. That's what, I think that's what Evan's trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> Evan every week like, is like, hey, I'm ordering some supplies to like colloidal <laughs> silver. Just, just stand there for me like for 20 hours. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, the light change. We light gotta change. <laughs> stay still till tomorrow. Yeah. Um, no, the, the fashionable lady, I, I love, I'm always gravitate towards fashion and one of my um, inspirations is Richard Avedon. Like this photo, I had the chance to see it recently at the Norton Museum in Boca. 
fudge. It's like insane. It's like to, to what we've been saying, it's, it's, it's um, what is that, medium format, right? It's four by five. You can so, tell yeah. by the registration marks at the top left and right, it's four by five. It's four but. by five. So it's like, it's massive. It's like, yeah. it's just huge standing there in front of you. So you can see like the details in the elephant and in the fabric of this woman. And it's just like the time period where he was taking, you know, these, where fashion was like, in, like insane, you know, like the women were just like long and lean and just so ele everything was just so elegant and feminine. And then he's got this contrast with these like elephants that are massive. I love that <laughs> photo. He is, uh, and then all the other stuff that he's done as well, just very like, yeah. very intense. And like his subjects were like out there, like he's, he did a lot of like family portraits and things like that that were just really, really out there. He did the one with the bees on that guy. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Super yeah. iconic. Um, and then the other one that I really like is Cindy Sherman, a little bit more like on the modern side. And, you know, the, it's her creative genius for me is like so inspirational. Like I've tried to do things like this where like I'll put on a wig <laughs> and I'll put on an outfit and I'll make up a scene and I'll try to take a photo. And it's like, you can't compare. You can't compare to her like genius, you know, and she like will put prosthetics and wigs and create this whole entire world with like backgrounds and costumes. And it's, it's, it's amazing. I saw her at the, at the MoMA in New York and I was just like, yeah, this is, this yeah. is cool. This no, is cool. Seeing photography like printed at that scale yeah. in like spaces that are yeah. just meant for you to sit with them. Yes. Like, there's, it does something to you. Yeah. It, does, it really has an effect. And that's, I think, the power of photography. Mm -hmm. And like, another thing that's so cool is just, there's a photographic style for everyone. And like, all of us have such mm -hmm. different styles, but the fact that you can go to a museum and just see so many different types of like, viewpoints and perspectives and yeah you get inspired you get a little bit yeah. of everything and you put it in you sprinkle it on your stuff it's so cool um uh well you know i mean a lot of what we do is That's professional awesome. photography and headshots and things like that but you know like what we've been talking about is the more creative side so i would love to see some personal work that we've all taken mm. that's the kind of work you don't really show your your clients but you show your co-workers so <laughs> yeah, yeah. we would like to ask you what some of yours what is yours Yvonne well <laughs> it's funny because my first photo was for a client but <laughs> <laughs> this is cool this was a it was like an album art that I took a photo of um for my friend's band they the name of the song was drink with a friend so the assignment was to kind of capture that energy of you know meeting up with a friend having a few drinks and kind of having that really nice moment with each other. So this was fun. It was a little stressful because we sh I shot it on film. So I did like nine takes of that like drink smash. And thankfully the last one was the one that worked. <laughs> wow. But that was a cool photo. And it was, it was cool because like with film, you never know if you got the moment. Yeah. So it's kind of like that pressure of like hoping and then you wait a week and then you finally see what your photos were and when it's exactly what you envisioned it, it it feels really good yeah, you know yeah. i like the i like that photo because anybody would have been like oh let's put people in there right and let's fill up the screen with drinks and friends and like you kind of like you know you took all of that out and you isolated this yeah. one particular moment that has the same meaning and you like stopped it with the flash and there's like there's motion there's like camaraderie there's like everything and then the contrast of the darkness and the, the color. It's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. shot. Yeah, that was fun. Good for you, mate. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Decisive moment right there. Decisive yeah. moment. Another, I guess another one of my works is this 4x5 photo. This is actually the first large format photo that I've taken. Um, I took it of my backyard that I was living at in the pandemic in my, in my studio space with one of my coworkers who was a landscape architect. So we designed that garden together. And that was kind of like, the place where I would go to kind of separate myself from the world mm. and just kind of like sit with my isolation and clear my head w of all my thoughts and this photo kind of just captures that it does. space for me and kind of what that meant you know like dipping my toes into a new format like large format yeah. during the pandemic and like that was such a cool format and just having a negative be like this big is just so cool because there's so much detail but that's cool that's a great shot yeah when i was i mean this is another photo that i took similar to your taste in street photography i i love to just walk around my neighborhood in coconut grove and 
take photos of the things that I saw when I was there. And this was a, just a dog that I saw peeking its head through a fence, but I loved how like it was surrounded. Wolf. Yeah, it looks like a wolf, doesn't it? <laughs> but I love how it was surrounded by the nature and just the green. And I thought it, it was kind of like a nice moment that I captured, but yeah. It's one of those photos that you can just look at and, and, and find something new every time that you look at it. It's just so many details and even the composition. Like mm -hmm, I love how that mm -hmm. palm tree on the top, the middle one, and then the bottom one just frame it. Yeah. It's just like, it's perfect. Yeah, well, I'd love to see some of your photos. So Chris, why don't you talk about some of yours? Let's do it. Uh, so the first <laughs> photo is, oh yeah, okay. So this is my first photo. Um, this is me in Venice. I went last year and I'm on the B gondola ride. It's kind of like a canoe thing they got going on. And gondola. No, the gondola. The gondola. The gondola. The gondola. Yeah, yeah. yeah gondola. Oh, so and um, yeah, so I don't know. I just saw this lady kind of lying down, uh, really enjoying her little spot of sun she got going on. I know. On. I love that. And uh, I don't know. I just like the difference in the tourists in the middle kind of walking through the streets of Venice and then her just kind of living her, her normal daily life. And uh, I don't know if she's homeless or not. Let's not get into that. But um, I don't know. I just like the composition here and I thought it was a pretty funny photo. I kind of like, I, I, was, I was happy that I was able to see this moment because uh, I don't think anyone is kind of paying attention to her. And I feel like in that moment, I was the only one that saw this. So I was pretty excited about this photo. I'm not gonna I lie. love that you can see like the layer underneath. Yeah, there. that layer underneath is kind of like taking like a, a slice of yeah. like, you yeah. know how they do in movies. It's just like, yeah. it shows you yeah. like what's beneath and then yeah. above it's Yeah, I love like the, the fact that like, I was able to really um, tackle this foreground and background kind of mm -hmm. element here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was really happy with I this I'd like photo. to be her right now, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just chilling. You know the siesta there. <laughs> For my next photo. Missing the gondolas drive by. <laughs> My next photo, um, so yeah, like I said earlier, I'm the friend that has the camera. So um, this is actually day one of the 75 hard challenge that I started with my friends. Did you finish? Uh, yeah, we finished. It was oh. actually very hard, but we did it. But yeah, day one, we all kind of think as college students, we thought we were super athletes. And um, yeah, we decided to go up and down these uh, bleachers 50 times, which was a terrible task. But I see that my boy uh, was alone on the other side. He felt like he was kind of on some Batman uh, uh, spirit and he was trying to do things on his own. And I just saw this composition and I thought, hey, let me snap a photo here. And I, I really like how it came out. The, the diagonal line here, the contrast with the red and blue. I just I feel like, like I saw something. Yeah, it's perfect. No, it's and important. it's such what I was mentioning is that it's it's such a small like person within the frame, but your eye just gravitates mm -hmm. yeah. directly towards mm -hmm. them. Yeah, I feel like I really nailed the composition here. Uh, we can do the next photo here. Next photo is uh, my, oh, I also love shooting black and white. It kind of makes me view the world a little bit differently. Um, yeah, so this is like a family get together. Everyone's kind of like drinking, eating food, doing their own thing. And I'm more of a fly on the wall in these types of scenarios. So, and I kind of saw like these little kids having fun and I felt like I needed to grab this moment here. Another decisive moment. Yeah. Uh, I felt like I captured the movement in this and I'm pretty happy about this photo as well. You can see like the tension, everything, even though it's a single image that's frozen, you see the tension in it, you know, and it's, it's yeah, and movement. It, almost, it makes me like imagine like just the moment that happened right after, yeah. you know, yeah. like it's almost like she's about to jump in the pool and I just imagine what it was like to splash in the water yeah. and it's just that's the beauty of photography is yeah. just capturing little small moments and yeah. or even like the, the the feet in the water like what's the temperature like yeah. it's black and white so you, you don't know usually you'll see like a in color it's like a clear you think it's cold but like even like what's the temperature mm -hmm. what does it feel like you know yeah. the sensations of it definitely well karina well, karina so <laughs> but one of my favorite photos and this is just like a project that i worked on for a whole entire year um i was very lucky to have uh, spent a whole year on that other bed with my grandma. Um, so I chose the, took the opportunity to just document her every day. And, you know, I have, I don't know, a, a ton of pictures for an entire year of her just um, staying up with me, waking up with me and doing, you know, her everyday things. He's, she's like sitting there mending some, you know, my shirt or some pants or something. She was like, 95 i think at the time wow. so um that was that that does those photos to me i just treasure them so much because she's not around anymore so i get to remember everything that we talked about during that time frame <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> um then another one of my favorite photos i recently got 
chosen um, as a part of a, a group exhibit in, uh, with the Praxis Gallery. It's uh, this, uh, I took the, the left picture was in Austin, Texas, obviously, and it was like a street photo. So like this guy was just walking by the wall and he was just staring at me the whole time that I kept shooting. And it was one of those where I could just keep shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting. And this was the one still that, you know, that I liked from that whole set. Um, and then I, when I zoomed in later, I noticed like his tie matched the back of the wall perfectly. It was yellow and, and blue. So I put it together next to this other photo, so just like the contrast, you know, diptych style. And that one is in Japan, so you have like the, the trees. Also like, I didn't put any filter on this because it was just so perfect with the blue and the red and the yellow. So I'm really happy that they, they chose that photo, so yay me. And then um, I'm also, I also take part in this 24-hour project that happens once a year. And it's just like t photographers from all over the world start on, you know, at midnight on this particular date and they will photograph their community for 24 hours. And we upload one photo per hour to, the, to, the, to your Instagram. And then the 24-hour project Instagram page could randomly choose you. But if you follow the 24-hour Instagram page, you will see photos from all over the world. And so then this uh, particular day, we were in, it was Memorial Day weekend, we were on South Beach with a group that I was leading. And this girl was there dancing and she was just like, sort of singing and, and, and doing things. And I was just like, hey, you know, what's your name? Can I, you know, I tell everybody, like, I'm doing this project. Do you mind if I take some pictures? And she starts telling me, and, and I forgot to get what she said, but she was something like, my name is Rose, and I'm the daughter of a preacher, and I just came out of jail, and I'm getting married, and I'm pregnant. And I was just like, oh, okay, that's <laughs> all very good. But, you know, and, and the 24 Hour Project also does, like, exhibits around the world. So this photo got chosen to be part of the New York exhibit. So. Very cool. I, I, I you know, yeah, I amazing. Let's cool. get a, a round of applause for this <laughs> gallery featured <laughs> photographer sitting right next to us. I want to get in a gallery. It's like a AK beat us off. Well, from the things she was saying, it sounds it sounded like she felt pretty free, and the photo that you were able to get looks like she's pretty free. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of like the whole thing about photography. Bro. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's that moment, right, mm -hmm. that you're able to tell that story about this person just on the street like what is she doing what is she you didn't to have her? to tell me what she said by what i'm looking at she feels very free and now that you said you told she her got out she of said, jail she, <laughs> yeah she yeah. feels She's free like, so. <laughs> and that's i think that's another element <clears throat> of photography is just its ability to let us connect with strangers mm -hmm. yeah. and like sometimes you take a photo of someone that you never would have talked to exactly. unless you were taking that photo yeah and then you just hear something about their life that inspires you and it's it's a way to bring people together i think mm -hmm. for sure um, I think as a, as a photographer, um, you photograph what you love. Yeah. yeah. And I think we have that same theme is, uh, in my case and in mo most photographers cause it is family. Um, and I love photographing family. That's what I think got me into photography was just capturing, um, the, this for example is my, my little brother growing up and Aww. now he's 16. So he doesn't look, you know, remotely or anything like this. And it's just, you're the historian of your family yeah. and just yeah. creating a the timeline. Historian. Yeah. And you just, Aww. you're able to, to share these photos. This is my little sister. Um, you're able to share these stories with the rest of your family or family members that are coming after you that yeah. will like to look back and see their, their history and their, their origin. You know, yeah. this, they could say, this was my grandma. Look at her, like how, as a child, like having fun blowing bubbles. Um, these both were shot in black and white. This, I believe, was um, Tri-X, and the other one was Portra 400. Oh, nice. Um, the other one was 120 millimeters. But I just love how, like, this capturing the moments. And here, like, for example, the decisive moment was, like, just picking the right frame to yeah. isolate those yeah. two bubbles. Yeah. And yeah. the contrast with her hair. You know, she, no, she's not thinking weird. about anything else right now except the bubble that's, yeah. you know, the forming there. Um, so I think that's that's super important. And you also get different experiences. I got to photograph. I was the quasi White House photographer for one day. <laughs> you know, and it's, well, well, how'd that happen? It's you get put in these circumstances sometimes as a photographer that that puts you, push you out of your, your comfort zone and you mm -hmm. have to just adapt. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest things about photography. Is you just have to adapt and overcome whatever your, your situation you're put in. Yeah. So Definitely. here it was uh, uh, Joe Biden was visiting uh, location and you know there's a bunch of press and photographers that were selected that they can go in 
And in the beginning, they were kind of like, okay, just stand in the back there. We don't have a spot for you, but just go ahead and like, this is, you know, just don't, don't be in anybody's way. And I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I'm not important. It's fine. But then uh, 15 minutes before her arrival, I see them coming, you know, rushing in panic. And they're like, oh, you're the quasi White House photographer. Literally, that's what the guy told me. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and you know what? I wasn't even nervous. I was like, I got this. Like, don't even like, don't even stress. And he's like, all right, you got to get these shots. And then he was like, everybody get out of his way. If he's, you know, if he tells you to move, move. So then I'm there, like, <laughs> he's getting me, like, VIP access, and it was super cool. So nice. you get, you wow. know, you get to experience some, a lot of these cool things that, you know, as a photographer, if you do it commercially like this. Cool. Super cool. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, that kind of presents a moment for us to talk about photo projects at Clutch that we're kind of proud and excited of. So let's dive in. One project that stood out to me was actually one of the first projects that I was in at yeah. Clutch, the DCC jerseys. Yeah. This was super cool. This was our dive into product photography, hype photography. Our assignment was to take photos of all the jerseys that represent the DCC over the years. And I mean, look at the hype video that we edited from those photos. It looks amazing. That was such a fun shoot. Yeah. And speaking of overcoming challenges, that you know, to get that jersey filled in like that, that wasn't photo, uh, Photoshop or AI or nothing. That's, uh, we had to f find a mannequin and just fiberglass or cutting off like limbs and like making like this weird thing to just hold the shape. And no, it, it was came quite out really the project. Good. Yeah. And it was Very late solid. night too. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was, it was very cool. Yeah. I was very We got a system going. And yeah. And I feel like it's fun doing those more creative special projects, you know, like, a lot of the times it's headshots and portraits, but every once in a while we get like a cool product photography gig and mm -hmm. those are always fun to kind of like flex our creative muscles a mm -hmm. bit. Like this one actually, Acrotech. Yeah. It's a, a paint uh, company and, and they make different specialized products. Uh, but you, it's, it's, I think you have to always come with the mindset. It's not just do the, what everybody else is doing, it's elevate. Mm. Um, elevate this, this, this product or elevate, you know, the, the experience. Yeah. And, and here we tried to be a little bit more creative. That was actually in my hand. I think one of you suggested, hey, Jay-Z, you got manly hands. <laughs> Carry this bucket. I was like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, so then I, it, it's, it's actually uh, making something interesting. Yeah. And I, I take that approach, I think, in, in general in photography, too, if, you're used to seeing things at this height. What if you just come down a mm -hmm. little bit lower and yeah. see it from this side? That's yeah. why you shoot from the hip yeah. and those old school cameras, the TLRs, and everything just looks so different and so cool. It's like a different perspective. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Well, one other shoot that we had recently, which Chris can talk a little bit about, was this volleyball assignment that we had. Tell us more. So that was really fun. Uh, so it all started um, with David and his daughter, Sophia. Uh, she, uh, she's in a volleyball team and David had this idea of taking a cool composite group photo. So it started with that. We kind of separated them into little groups of twos and threes. And with the power of Photoshop and AI, I was able to kind of make a whole group team composite and make it look like they all actually took the photo all together. So that was pretty interesting. It's, I feel like it was a cool little project to kind of, uh, you know, learn and stuff like that. And uh, I feel like I really was able to put practice and make it perfect. You know, I think we did a pretty good job as a team as well. We also did uh, different aspects of that project too with video and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, this was pretty exciting. Uh, I was able to practice lighting and my Photoshop skills really went up that day, so. Yeah. And then we also got the Sophia George uh, campaign that we did for. Yeah, this one, one we it. actually, um, it, it was our first, uh, Delving, delving into like uh, AI. So this is an AI background that we created mm -hmm. uh, using AI. And um, I think the, there's a lot of talk of AI and there's a lot of people that are nervous, creatives, because there's like, hey, how am I, you know, this is going to take our jobs and things like that. But I feel like uh, you gotta, you're got you seeing it the wrong way. You may have to see AI as a tool. Yep. Like uh, our camera is a tool. Yeah. 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 So here we created this backdrop and it fit perfectly. We created, put the doctor, we placed her in this lab scene and for the campaign it worked great yeah and it's just you know learning to use the tools around you to create products like this and have a, a happy client and just you know elevate your work yeah no definitely and that's kind of what i guess our emphasis in photography now at clutch is is just like how can we incorporate all these different techniques and tools and technology to make the client experience as smooth and seamless as possible you know and really just give them like photos that they're proud of and 
they can look at and feel like we captured exactly the professional look that they wanted, you yeah. know? Um, and have fun while doing it. It's yeah, an and have fun. Yeah. You know, with, with all these, these photo shoots and all the, 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 the locations that we've done, and it's, I feel like you always leave there and you had a great time with the client. It was a big party, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. some other stressful moments in like coordinating, but for the most part, everybody leaves like accomplished and just yeah. feeling good. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that just speaks to like, the innate desire to just always capture life around us and like mm -hmm. that's kind of what photography is and why photographers do it is their desire to just constantly like document the yeah. world around us yeah. and capture the way that they see life and you know like it's special there's something special about the way that someone views life through their specific individual lens you know and i think that's just what is so exciting about photography is there's so many things to capture i mean life is happening all around us all the time and mm -hmm. you know there's always going to be someone with a camera there to capture it i think and we need to be appreciated 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 more <laughs> <laughs> because um, everyone's kind of doing life and doing their thing but when they're nine years old i hope you have a great memory because you're not going to really yeah. remember most of your life and i think I'm, I'm pretty excited for the whole book i'm going to be able to see and look back on yeah. for yeah. my life you know yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so be sure. analog slow things down yeah. slow it down <laughs> slow it down that was a fun podcast y'all yeah I think, I think we got into it talking about photography yeah. you know i think yeah. we each bring something unique and special to the table and we're glad that we were able to share that with you guys yes yeah. go i'm team. curious right in the comments Submit some of your photos and tell us one of your experiences. Subscribe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah who's, who's the best photographer in class? <laughs> Write that in the comment. <laughs> Peace. Bye. 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 And, and that was talk to me, we did perfect. <laughs>